Uh, welcome back to the course. So, and let's get started. The day you arrived in Canada, and that's what happened with me. I arrived in 2016, and the amount of information I received was like zero. It wasn't like this. But now, I would say, if I look backward, I would say the amount of information I received of you can't match in Canada is like this picture. So you will receive lots of information. You will receive lots of uh, um, things that partially are real but are not real. You will hear lots of advice. Let's put it that way. I want you to ask yourself, whenever you hear advice from someone, is, did they cross the bridge or no? Are they a person who are an international medical graduate who came here and they were able to match or no? There's lots of advice out there. And please take your advice from someone who already was able to cross the bridge. For example, if I want to become like a computer engineer, I don't go to a physician and ask them to teach me how to become a computer engineer, right? If I want to become uh, a billionaire, I don't go and ask someone who like is making like seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year on how to become a billionaire. So always ask a person who already achieved the goal that you desire how they achieve that. Okay. So the first website is the Medical Council of Canada website. You go nowhere else. You go to the Medical Council of Canada website. Things to look for, and like they will mention what are the requirements. And also, the Medical Council of Canada regulates how to become a physician in the entire nation. But that being said, as you can see here, for example, like Alberta Clinical and Surgical Assistant Program, Alberta International Medical Graduate Program, there are provincial medical graduates program. For example, uh, Manitoba has practice ready assessments. Uh, BC has its own program, um, and Newfoundland has its own program. So different provinces have their own program. So you can also, through the Medical Council of Canada website, visit these prov provincial programs and email them. Explain your situation. They might guide you. There are lots of people who are able to get a license here through the Practice Ready Assessment Program in Manitoba or Newfoundland or other programs, right? So always... Uh, don't limit yourself and ask yourself, depending on your training level, where you are in your training, what are the programs you can go through? And this is very important because like some people might go through Manitoba practice ready assessment. Some people might have license in BC. Some people might have a license in Newfoundland and some people might apply through the CARMS and get in. So there are different ways and there is a need of physicians in Canada. Okay. Um, then as you can see, like the, the website have lots of links and lots of, uh, also like resources for you so to go to the medical council of canada and find what path you want to take so that's step one okay and this is for the regular path for this is for the comms path i'm not talking about practice ready assessment i'm not talking about there is some um uh, relationship between like for example the practice ready assessment because like i think you might also have to take the exams and uh, applying to carms uh but here i'm talking about the regular comms pathway you want to apply to CARMS and become a physician. Okay, so step number one, exams, exams, exams. DAC OSCE, the MCCQ1, and the language test. Okay, so these exams are required to apply anywhere in the country. Okay, um, depending on the year, like the NAC OSCE have different grading system. When I wrote my exam, it was out of 100. The MCCQ1 also have different grading system. Um, and the language test, TOEFL, IELTS, it depends on the CARMS website. If you go to the CARMS website, you can also find what language test uh, to do. Um, usually people have different preferences. Again, I'm not going to go to details here. But talking about medical exams, your goal is to achieve as high as you can. I get lots of uh, questions and emails. Uh, what do you think is a good score? The good score is the highest score you can achieve. Okay. Programs, when they select candidates, different programs have different criteria, but most of programs, they don't know you, okay? And one of the ways to fill their candidates is through, to, through their scores, right? And this is very important. Uh, I'm not saying if you have low scores, you can't match. Watch my interviews. I have interviews with internists. I have interviews with pediatric neurologists who are able to match 
and they maybe didn't have that highest score uh, and they always tell you score high, score high, score high. So your number one focus should be on a scoring high. So this is number one. And also in your CV, okay, usually your exams come first thing after your education. So this is very important. Exams, exams, exams. Okay. I'm going to make more videos about exams and how to prepare for them. Um, how much time do you need for prepare, for, to prepare for the entire time? It's, it's different, okay? But usually six months to a year because you have to take exams, you have to do an observership, you have to, take, you have, to have a Canadian experience, uh, you have to have some volunteering, which I'm going to talk about, you have to have some research, you have to have... Don't get overwhelmed. I'm going to talk to you about the steps, but usually it's around a year, some people two years. I interviewed people in my channel who were able to match after four attempts, five attempts. Like, it's doable, man. It's doable. The system rewards the persistence, okay? So the time is different, but around a year, I would say. Okay. Um, let's move on. Uh, the second important thing is a Canadian experience. And this is very important. Okay. So when you come here, you are coming from a different healthcare different medical background, even if you are coming from the U.S., even if you are coming from the U.S., Canadians love to see a Canadian experience. And there are different ways to get a Canadian experience. You can do elective if you're a medical student. So some medical students are in Ireland and they are planning to come here. Welcome to the channel, guys. So you can do electives. You are privileged to have that. But lots of international medical graduates, when they arrive, they don't have that uh, privilege, right? Um, so... The only way is to do an observership. The difference between elective and observership is when you do an elective, you go see patients, you can have hands-on experience because the regulatory body, which is your university, is still sponsoring you. Okay, so let's say if that person or that patient get harmed or God forbid, like you do something wrong, right? So there is someone who is backing you, insuring you. But once you graduate, your university is not there. So now it becomes an observership. Observership is... You walk with the person or the physician, you shadow them, okay? You're not allowed to have hands-on experience with see patients. But that being said, I feel like, especially like international medical graduates, like they, they get usually scared um, because like when you go and shadow a physician and that person trusts you, okay, and they see your skills, they might ask you if, they are work if you are working as a physician assistant in their clinic, they might ask you, to do a physical exam and take history. So that is a still under medical supervision. And it's something you can talk about. So doing an observership doesn't mean that you can't touch patients. You can touch, but you need, a, you need someone to observe you. And you also have to communicate that with the patient. You have to tell them, like, I'm working here as a physician assistant. I'm an international medical graduate. Is it okay if I examine you and take history if you are doing a physician assistant role or if you are doing an observership role? So communicate that. Be open about your role when you are doing an observership, okay? And some physicians feel comfortable to mention in their letter when they're going to write you a letter of reference that, yeah, that person had hands-on experience. I observed them and supervised them. Some physicians know. It depends on their practice setting. Okay, so let's summarize and let's go back to the basic Canadian experience. Okay, so we're going to talk about observership. There are other ways also of getting Canadian experience. We're going to talk about it. Okay, so observership is where you can partially have hands-on experience. Elective is where you are allowed to see patients by yourself without supervision. You go and you see patients, you come back, you tell your staff what you've done, and uh, they will assess your clinical uh, judgments, your knowledge, and stuff like that. Okay, so this is also important. But how to get a Canadian experience, how to get an observership, okay? So let me talk about it, okay? So when I arrived, I was like, I didn't know what to do. I, 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 I talked to my friends in the U.S. and they told me like, hey, uh, like send some emails to physicians around you. Uh, but then I found my friend who told me like, this process can be frustrating, okay? So hang on there. You have to send lots of emails, okay? So wherever you are, find family medicine practices, internal medicine, whatever clinics you have. Go to Google, search clinics around you, search physicians, and also search hospitals, okay? So when you search hospitals, like if you go to their website and you dig their website, you can find physicians and their emails. So clinics and hospitals, those are the two settings that you need to look for, okay? And then you need to look for emails 
physician's emails in different clinics, physician's emails in different hospitals. Usually are mentioned in the hospital's um, uh, uh, website. Another thing is some hospitals offer observership. For example, UHM in Toronto, they have a program for international graduates based on what I heard last time, where you can find an observership through their UHN. They will tell you, like, find a staff who will supervise you, and you can do an observership in UHN. It's an international place. Some hospitals, the small hospitals, don't offer the observership opportunity. Okay? So you have to dig well, and your goal is to find emails of physicians. Okay. So that's step number one. Also, don't limit yourself into a city. For example, if you are living in a small city, you can find them. For, for example, I was in Ottawa. It's not a small city, but I, I did lots of observerships in Toronto. I did lots of observerships um, uh, in that area. It wasn't easy to get them, but I did. And also having connections. Like, for example, I remember one of my observerships was through my, uh, my parents' family doctor, not my family doctor. My parents' family doctor. I went to my parents to a family to a family doctor, and I was like, "Hey, doctor X, like uh, I did my med school back home, and I was wondering if I can do observership." And she was like, "What does that mean?" I explained to her like, "I'm an international graduate. I'm applying this year to become a resident to get to that spot. I need a letter from a physician, and I was wondering if you can, uh, what I can join you, and maybe you can like." Sorry, guys. I'm just having uh, goosebumps. It's like. Uh, it's been five years ago and lots of people trusted me and helped me. So, uh, so can I join you? And she said, yes. Um, and uh, I joined her on a weekly basis. So she used to go to retirement homes. I used to join her. And together we saw a patient, examined patient, and she wrote me one of my letters. Um, so that's how I found it. Also, like uh, community centers, like churches, mosques, or whatever, like, you go to a community center, you know people, go and introduce yourself to your community and ask them, hey, do you know a physician uh, from a similar background? And go and talk to them and ask them, can I observe you? Can I come to your place? Can I walk with you? Can I help you? Okay? Um, so that's another way. Now let's talk about emails. Okay? So you got the emails. You're trying to build connection in your community. You're trying to build connection with other people. LinkedIn, also it's another great way to build connection with IMGs and physicians who are IMGs. Sometimes you might have find physicians who are IMGs on LinkedIn and you can also message them and see if that works. Okay, there are lots of templates online on how you have to find an observership. Please, please, please go online and search on Google observership letter for IMG, IMG observership letter, IMG observership email. You're going to find tons, man. You don't need to pay for this, okay? I'm doing this for free because I just I know how it feels like to become to be an IMG, and I know how like um, it's the resources are scarce, but you can do it. Okay, so we start something like this. This is a very simple email. Dear doctor, last name. My name is X, Y, and Z. I'm an international medical graduate from City. Okay, so if they have a research work, um, you can find on the hospital website usually, or Google Scholar, okay? If they have a recent research work, don't tell someone I read your research work from 10 years and I was impressed because they will not remember that 10 years. Or don't get, don't email someone I read your research work and uh, and the guy is not a big researcher. They have, they have five or six publications on Google Scholar or PubMed, okay? But if, if a person who have like lots of publications and lots of research in an area that you are interested in, for example, in neurology, right go and read their work and see if that interests you and be like be honest don't lie be honest i have i've read your research work and i really loved your work i really enjoyed your paper about x y and z i'm very interested in the field of family medicine internal medicine neurology and i have an experience you might have an experience you might not have have not okay so this will help you like for example if you have an experience in electronic medical records if you have an experience in seeing patients uh, you didn't intern here. If you have an experience in like a specific field, you need a fellowship or internal medicine residency back in your country or any kind of residency in your country. Mention your experience, okay? And then I'm writing to you to ask for observership opportunity with you for one or two weeks, and I'm happy to accommodate your schedule. This experience will help me in achieving my goal to becoming a licensed physician in Canada, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Please find attach my CV. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Yours sincerely, your first and last name. Always attach your CV. And that's why my CV course, I teach people how to write CV. Go to my CV course. It's online. It's on YouTube. It's for free. 
okay so write a good cv start with your cv as early as possible please okay don't leave your cv until comes don't leave your cv until the last moment you need your cv as early as possible Okay, so again, you can make this template different forms. You can go online and you can find templates. And now it's it's, it's a crazy. There are tools that write you an email. Okay, Chat GPT, find it. Chat GPT is an open AI company source that you can go Chat GPT and tell them to write you an email. It's crazy. You can paraphrase the email and make it more professional. Go to Kilobot. Okay, Kilobot is a tool that paraphrases your work. Okay, go to my personal statement course and you're gonna find what I'm talking about, right? So you, you don't confine yourself, don't limit yourself, okay? Write an email, start emailing. How many emails you have to write? Uh-huh, that's a trick. You have to write lots of emails. Don't get frustrated after sending five or 10 emails, okay? I remember I wrote 100 or 200 emails, like physicians again and again and again and again. I create an Excel sheet, I put the physician name, I put their address, their clinic, and their email, okay? And I put the date that I send my email to them, okay? And I replicated the process. After two weeks, I would send a gentle reminder, please, doctor, last name, just a gentle reminder to follow up my previous email. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Don't get offended if you don't, if they don't reply. Out of the 100 email, five might reply, three might reply. Don't get offended by that. People are busy. I didn't, I, I really didn't understand that until I was in the system. Becoming a physician here is not easy. Becoming a physician here is like, it's very, very, very busy lifestyle, but it's doable. I enjoy it. I love it. It's the best work in the life. I would never trade it with anything else. I love my job. I'm not complaining. That being said, um, so don't get offended. They don't answer your email. Um, send them a follow-up email, send lots of emails, uh, proofread your email. Grammarly, it's a free online tool. It can proofread your emails, okay? As you can, as you notice, like I'm giving you lots of free online tools and resources because like in this age, you don't need to be smart. You need to know how to execute because there are tons of free tools for you to help you. Okay, uh, this is about observerships and exams and let's move on to the next lesson.